Hey everybody, Phil Friedman from Friedman Adventures. My brother Paul has just flown in from Taiwan, so we headed straight to Ventura Harbor Sword Fishing. That's Sal you see there, getting anglers rigged up and ready to jump on board the island spirit. And we can't wait, because we are going to head out to Santa Cruz Island where there's been some good rock fishing and good barracuda fishing. A great seminar on the way out. Time to get ready to go fishing. We'll start with the rockfish and end up with the barracuda. Come along for the adventure. Oh my gosh. Ooh, Ooh, nice. Look at this it's awesome. Beautiful. Charlie, good job, man. Let's go. The Island Spirit and her great crew run every single morning out of Ventura Harbor Sport Fishing. You're going to love it. And if you are a novice angler, they're going to teach you how to fish. And I guarantee you, after one trip on the Island Spirit, not only will you have caught some fish and had some fun, but you will learn a lot. These guys are teachers. They are so patient and so great. Island Spirit, I hope you can join them soon. Let's get back to some action. Nice. Oh my God. We were catching such a variety of different bottom fish, including this lingcod. Look how quickly this thing swims away. You're going to see lots of smiles when you get on board the island spirit. Just being on the water is so much fun, whether it's watching the birds steal bait or catching a variety of fish or seeing dolphins and whales and so many other creatures of the sea, it will be a great experience. But now it's time to start catching some barracuda. <laughs> That's a good one. Ah, nice one, man. That's a big gar. This, uh, it's been a while, like about 20 years. And nice one, Cody. Look at that. Fish. <laughs> Single hook jigs make releasing barracuda so easy. <laughs> Bar, man. Woo! Look at that thing. Wind it. Yeah. Big gar. See that, Cody? That's nice fish. <laughs> That's a lot! Size of that thing. Oh my god. Here, let me help you out, buddy. Wow, nice job. Good job. Nice job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good one. Good job. Good job. Good Good one. Woo. It was so much fun spending time with my brother and catching barracuda like we did many years ago together and meeting so many lovely and nice people who were catching on to fishing and starting to fall in love with it thanks to the crew of the Island Spirit. Great times and I can't wait to go back again. Man, that seal really wanted them, but we got them away from them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Check out Captain Cody Rogers bouncing this nice big barracuda and watch that big gar throw the jig at the very last minute. Phil! There you go. There you go. All right, all right. You'll be on the. Uh... There he is. All right. Nice. Yes, all right, guys. Yes. Heck yeah. Following the birds is a sure way to locate the barracuda. That's exactly where you want to cast. And there are so many tips to learn, and that's why we did a podcast on the way in with <laughs> Captain Cody Rogers that will follow this great fishing action, so stay tuned. Nice. Very nice. My brother Paul and I started as deckhands, or I should say pinheads, on the Redondo Special many decades ago. I was 12 years old. Paul was 10. So it was fun to be catching Barracuda again together. Kind of nostalgic. And to do it on the island spirit with her great crew, well, it just made it that much better. What a fun time we had. That's a good one, isn't it? Give me a cramp in the arm, too. Yeah, that's a nice one. Oh, here it comes. Oh, he got it on his own. Up and over. Whoa. Catch and release, Cody. <laughs> Whoa, another big gar on the iron ball. Right, good job. 
Nice gar, man. Beautiful fish. Oh, another one coming on back there. As we headed home and the boys started cleaning up our catch, my brother and I both agreed that we hated to see this day come to an end, as did all of the passengers on board. The Island Spirit. She runs out of Ventura Harbor, sword fishing every single day, and customer service, well, you're not going to believe how great it is. Please, take my word for it. Get up there to Ventura Harbor sword fishing. Get on one of their fine boats. Join Cody Rogers and her fine crew on board the Island Spirit. And stay tuned because now we have a podcast where you're going to learn a lot more about fishing the Channel Islands and the Island Spirit. Have a great one. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for more, my friends. Cody Rogers, man, it is so good to see you, my friend. How's everything? Hey, great to see you too, Phil. It's great, man. I'll tell you what, my brother (coughs) just flew in from Taiwan. He's down there. He's totally raving about the day we just had on the (laughs) Island Spirit here out of Ventura Harbor Sword Fishing. We had such a good time, man. Thank you. Thanks. It's great having you out. It was fun having Paul out. Paul's stoked. He's got to be asleep, man. What are you caught 90% of the fish today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was pretty hot up there in the bow and having a good time with you and me, and it was great. We we spent the first part of our trip, we'll get into it in more detail, but we caught all kinds of great eating rockfish, and then we finished up with the best barracuda bite I've seen in a long time. I mean, I haven't seen big gar like that for a while. That was <laughs> fun, man. No, that was good. That was good. Told you it'd get going there towards the end. Yeah, you were you. right, man. <laughs> you called it. In fact, you were kept saying, "Well, once the tide, you know, gets into optimum position, we're going to start catching it." Man, yeah. they fired up and bit. Yeah, that was fun. That was good. They're thick right now. Thick so, fish, big. Oh man, I'm telling you, those were big gar, weren't they? <laughs> yeah. They got to be like six, seven, eight pounders. <laughs> we're not sinking, are we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Being annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that stuff happens, man. Yeah. All right, so alert. let's let's talk a little bit oh. about the island spirit. Honest to God, we had such a great time. I, th- I don't know whether it's the food, whether it's the, um, the crew. I mean, all of that is so top notch on this rig it's unbelievable how good you guys are with customer service oh thanks yeah we uh we work hard to try to make that a thing i think you know this is fishing number one but number two it's customer service people are paying money to come out here to have a good time catch fish be treated well respected and we definitely want to make sure that's what happens when they come on the boat we've got a good crew down there you guys can we have Today, Joey, Chase, and Gavin, that's, that's pretty much our A-team right there. Yeah, it is. That's pretty man. much our whole team. They are so good. <laughs> they are so polite, so good, so knowledgeable about fishing. I mean, you have a great seminar on the way out. Um, yeah. And then <clears throat> it's just a constant seminar all day long out here. There was yeah, a lot of novice out. anglers out here today, and they yeah. all caught fish. Yeah, no, it was great. Yeah, I think... Um, we had we had one big group of ten, you, your brother, and then a couple, a couple other guys came out open party, and it's pretty much I think everybody was a rental rod, yeah, maybe except for I think two, two people, yeah, had right, gear today, so yeah, no, that was fun. They they did a good job. They listened, took the advice, asked for help, and caught fish absolutely what's the schedule up here on the island spirit out of ventura uh, harbor sport fishing we're online every day seven days a week you know we have charters some days but the schedule's up on the website venturasportfishing.com we're online seven days a week we leave at 6 a.m and get back at 5 p.m that's that's the set schedule we don't have anything going on right now where we're leaving earlier or doing anything funky we we'll try to keep it consistent that way you know consistency is key yeah, definitely. I mean, even the little things, like we're standing up there at 5.30 this morning, and you guys aren't waiting till 6 to board everybody. You go 
to the bait receiver. You load bait, and then we walk on board, and off we go. Yeah, you know? no, absolutely. We try to get everything done that way. Once everybody's here, signed in, you guys come on down, and we get the heck out of there, get to business. So how's it looking for you? So, you know, let's talk about today's trip, and then we'll kind of project into the future. I'd like to th see what you think. It's kind of a cold water year this year, isn't it? You know, it stayed a lot colder, a lot colder than, you know, the past few years have. I'm not saying last year the water was really warm. It spiked up a bit there. In the summertime, it kind of jumped up big. We had all that south swell from those few hurricanes and stuff, and I think, I think we have one of those events going on right now. There's a little yeah. south pushing in from that storm down below. Yeah. And uh, hopefully it warms back up. It's like I was telling you this morning, we were fishing, the water is 59 degrees. You know, two weeks ago, it was 64 degrees there. We left today, I think it was just under 62, so it didn't really quite warm up once the sun came out. And we're we had not at the island now, but coming back onto the beach and still only 61.7. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's unbelievable. We had really excellent rock fishing today. Uh, should people come for the near future prepared to do some rock yeah, you know, kind of combo fishing or what? Yeah, you know, we always try to do a little bit of everything unless there's something substantial that, you know, we think we can fish bass all day or do barracuda all day. You know, we want to, you know, we take a lot of novice people, like you said, and not everybody can come out and throw a jig or fly line a bait or fish a bait on a sliding sinker, especially, you know, we're pretty much 99% anchovies been our bait here. Last year, this year, we did have a little sardine last year, but pretty much straight anchovy right now. And it's really nice chovy. It's not that tiny little stuff. There's some big ones in there. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a learning curve for some people. So we try to break the day up and, you know, we'll either start in the morning if that's our best shot at it and do that for a while and keep it going if it is. Or, you know, we'll go do some rock fishing and whitefish and try to catch some sheephead. Uh, you know, whitefish right now has been pretty slow since the season opened. There's a little spurt like a week ago where it bit a little bit, but, you know, in March we were out here fishing them, given that's all we could catch. You know, normally we'd be fishing rockfish at that time of year. And, ran a few trips and it was limits every trip and then april came around and rockfish open you get your rockfish and go try to catch a whitefish and pretty much fall on your face <laughs> what's, what's up with that i don't know it's just funky it's not ready yet you know yeah it'll it'll come around and once it does we try to do that more than the rock fishing you know summertime we want to keep it shallower for people you know, we spent a lot of our early part of the season here in some deeper water there's no depth restriction now i mean we weren't super deep but you know we we're fishing 600 650 oh, stuff wow. like that you know which is pretty deep for yeah the average fisherman you yeah know, people aren't used to it but it's good fishing but you know we're not trying to do that every day you pretty much wreck put everybody asleep by the end of that they're tired they can't do anything else <laughs> yeah, so you know we're trying to keep it as shallow as we can for rockfish and whitefish and you know, it's been picking a bit. We had a good mix of fish today. Yeah, we did. Good, I mean, excellent. Quality. Some big vermilions, whitefish, yeah. lots of goats. Yeah. Um, beautiful fish, man. Yeah, it was good. You know, we kind of lucked out there for a little bit. Like I said, the super moon just had the current really jacked up everywhere. I mean, you saw it. There were probably 15 tide lines every time. Yeah, it was crazy. Want to go a different direction, a different speed, and, you know, we did it until that current picked up too much and it wasn't working anymore but while we had our shot you know picked away at it which was nice you got plenty of tackle for rent so if somebody's listening like you said a bunch of people on here had rental gear and they're yeah. going home with full sacks of fish oh yeah yeah they did fine they did just fine catching barracuda some of them fish it you know, I didn't recommend it, but some of them fished a dropper loop and they still caught some bear. I <laughs> saw <laughs> that, man. <laughs> uh, some caught them on the sliding sinker and the anchovy, and then some of those guys, they even bought some surface irons this morning from the office, and they made it work and caught them. But our rental gear is really good. The rods are nice. Yep. They have good reels. Uh, your brother used one. That's right. He's bouncing bear. Me too. Bit. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we the office has everything you need, and... You know, a lot of people want to know the night before, and 99% of the time we have a general idea, but, you know, it's never really until the morning that day. You know, yeah. Everything. What you're going to do. Yeah. You know, everything can change overnight. But, you know, I'd come prepared right now. All you need, probably heaviest setup you need is a 30-pound setup right now. 
something you can fish, you know, 250, 300 feet probably at the most right now. And then have a lighter set up, you can go inside so you can fish bass, probably 15, 20 pounds set up. And of course, if you have a jig stick, I always recommend bringing that, you know, that helps out tremendously. But, um, where are we going with that? So, like, three <laughs> three rods, you're covered, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. You know, for the most part, two rods, you'll be fine. You know, just leave the leave the real plates and the broomsticks at home. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> That'll absolutely hamper your day if that's all you bring. Right, right. So, this guard, did you see this grade of Barracuda last year, and did it stick around for a while? You know, there was a lot of volume last year. There was a probably about a month stretch there and even after that it kind of stuck around it just got finicky finicky yeah know, that's a word but i think it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it, it got a little weird but for a while it was real good but you know there was a lot of shorts mixed in with that stuff last year too but it was good but this year you know the first first day we started fishing it i was surprised like you know i think we measured three fish that whole time pretty close to the same yeah. yeah i think i threw one short back i seen the guys throw a couple shorts back but for the most part i mean they're visually you know they're good and yeah i mean there was no was doubt on any yeah 28 inches or something that, that was a good thick one that's a nice one right even even some of the ones that are you know 29 inch over legal they're coming up fat yeah those oh my god are, i know these things are healthy right now <laughs> they are so cool you came up to me at one point and i think this is a good uh, time to teach people something. You said, "Hey, Phil, where are they?" And <laughs> and what you meant by that was, "Where are the birds dipping? Yeah. Where are you seeing the bird life?" Yeah, that's where you want to cast to, right? As you talk to people right yeah. now, you got to pay attention, yeah, right? I mean, you want to you want to keep an eye on the birds, definitely, mm -hmm. especially you know when there's fish around it. And like like you saw that stuff, you know, the seals. We had a couple big seals and a couple oh. small seals on us. And yeah, that big one was absolutely a destroyer. And, I don't know how many he ate, but he ate his fair share and about 15 other halves of ones. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, they get scared. They're not going to come up next to the boat when it's like that. They'll come up close, but those things are circling around the boat, hanging under the boat. They don't want to get close. They just kind of watch it just going around the boat. It'd do a cycle. It'd come down the starboard side, come up, stick off the bow, yep. go back down the fore. Yep. And, you know, there is always still a little bit of fish everywhere with it, but, you know, it's like I was helping that one gentleman with the spinning rod up in the bow. He's on the other side. Come up here, man. They're blowing up. You know, try to teach them. Keep your eye on the birds. Watch the birds. You'll see the fish push the bait. You'll watch the anchovy jump out of the water. You'll watch the barracuda next. Cast over there. That's where you want to be. Absolutely. Works so well. Fast retrieve, slow retrieve. How do you retrieve for barracuda? Uh, man, it all depends. You yeah. know, it kind of seems like a medium retrieve right now mm -hmm. for them. You know, it also depends what kind of jig you're fishing. We've been having a lot of luck. I I always recommend a Taddy C uh -huh. over here for the Barracuda. I don't the 45 works great. That C seems to work really well. I think it always has for Cuda. And that single hook, you know, sometimes that single hook works great. Sometimes you just fish all day and you're getting bumped on it. You can't get it in there and switch to a treble hook and then get them. But um, what jig do you have on there? Uh, I, we have a, a, a Taddy C, I believe, yeah, single, I hook. single hook. Taddy single C. hook. Yeah. And every, you know what I love about a single hook is you don't have to deal with, I mean, you just <laughs> yeah. shake them off, man, yeah. and they're on the deck. You don't close their mouth with all three. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Keep your hands clean. Yeah. It makes life easy, doesn't it? <laughs> no, absolutely. But yeah, that mega baits, you know, try to leave the stick baits and jerk baits and weird surface stuff with three treble hooks at home when you're fishing barracuda it works don't get me wrong but uh, it gets gets shaky when you're trying to swing those things over especially i know we got people around we, we have right. people that come out and do it and, you know it works but you know those little mega baits those things pff, money little mega baits cold snipers you know you gotta think you want to match the hatch we're throwing all this anchovy on it yeah. it's destroying it you know probably don't want to throw something that's that big out there at it but you get something anchovy colored like that, you're a good shot at catching them. Absolutely, man. And that, that seemed to work really, really well today. Now, one thing I noticed, man, your jig was all chipped up and the color, I mean, it didn't seem to be all that important. Yeah, no. And I, I talked to the guys from Taddy Lures many times and 
they say, you know, to be honest with you, I don't think color is that important. So what's your opinion? You see it day in and day out out here. You know, with the Barracuda, <clears throat> at least lately, it hasn't been so much. It's not an issue of the color. It's you want a jig that can swim. You want something that has nice action. You don't. You want it to look natural. You want it to be out there kicking, moving. You know, you still want something that comes back to the boat looking like this. It's not. It's. They don't like it. They'll just follow it. They're not going to bite it. But I mean, that's a whole other thing in itself. Trying to pick out a nice jig, and that takes a lot of time. And you got to go through them sometimes and try them out. And they don't swim. You know, they go to the junk pile or give it to your friend pile. Oh right. <laughs> but yeah, color. I don't. I don't think so much. I mean, you get a jig that swims and it loses all its paint, you just leave it. I was watching some of the guys that were novice anglers and they'd get a bite and they'd rear back on the rod and then drop their rod and the fish was gone. You hook yeah. your fish by turning the handle, right? Yeah, turn the handle. Keep winding. Keep winding. It's going to get tight. Once it gets tight, then you can bring your rod back, put a bend in it. But you just, I mean, you get bit on a surface iron or some kind of jig like that while you're retrieving it and you feel it bump and you yank it 99% of the time I guarantee it's just going to pop that right out of its mouth because the hook's not set yet. So you make a cast initially with your Taddy C. Mm -hmm. How far down the water column do you sink it? Do you give yeah, it a three count? You know, do sometimes you, it all depends. You got to experiment? It depends on the condition, the current, the wind, you know. Are the fish like completely up and on the surface? You know, sometimes, you know, the the past few days I think some of the guys were giving it like a three count letting it sink just a little bit I usually let it sink count to two I don't even count I just let it sink hit the water my line tight and start winding yeah but uh um, yeah sometimes you gotta let it sink a little bit you know sometimes you have the current fighting against you and you gotta imagine your surface iron doesn't weigh very much it's not gonna want to stay under if you have it right on the top of the water and it's ripping with the current or you yep. got the breeze and the current or you know sometimes you got choppy conditions and swell and then you know makes things tough but you know every day is different that's for sure you know every hour is different that first hour we were there the jigs didn't want to stay in the water that well we have that breeze coming over the island current going the opposite way yep. funky and then switched up and then worked out a lot better i think caught 99% of the coot after that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And are you fishing Spectra with a top shot of mono? Uh, or? I recommend fishing mono. Uh -huh. Honestly, you know, have some Spectra on your reel. That way, you know, you're not just constantly putting an entire spool of mono on there. But you want to definitely have enough mono to where you can comfortably cast that and then still have mono on there. You don't want to just have a top shot where, you know, you're casting it and then halfway out that knot's hitting your guide and it's bouncing back because you see it all the time people all just the time yeah have enough and it's just so much easier for people to cast on mono and you know people come out and they try to wing spectra and they don't really know what they're doing yet and there's i mean there's some guys that like fishing it like that i i personally don't i like monofilament on there uh it's smoother it's easier easier for to work with and then you know you're not blowing up your reel with you know 65 pound braid and it's not together and you're picking it out for the next half hour and not catching anything hey that's my specialty <laughs> i did that for you twice at least yeah, today didn't i on there, i'm pretty good at it. yeah and i still screwed it up <laughs> you did it once on accident the second one was on purpose <laughs> yeah <laughs> what pound mono are you talking 40 30 uh, 30 40 yeah 30 40 uh, i it all depends. When it's barracuda like this, I like 30. I think it's smoother. I think the jig swims a little bit better. But, you know, when there's yellowtail around and stuff, it's probably better to have some 40 on. Yeah. But, I mean, to each their own. I think everybody has their own preference, which, you know, goes to say, too, with people that like to fish braid on their jig sticks. But, you know. Yeah. I like 30. So previous to this bite, I mean, you you were having some exceptional halibut fishing up here. Occasional sea bass, right? You were doing really yeah. well on that stuff. Yeah, you know, we're... Is that we're, over with for the year, or is uh, that in our future, maybe? No, I don't I don't know if it's over with. I, you know, I, it's tough to say if that sea bass is going to bite big again, you know. That halibut, you know, that bit really well. It seemed God, like yes. up and down the coast, you know, from, you know 
down there where you're at, and he drove all the way freaking up to Santa Barbara and stuff. You know? Yeah. That was, One of the uh, better years you've seen? Yeah, no, that was that was great. It was good, you know. We were able to go in and, you know, get our rockfish in the morning and then go and spend some time and fish halibut and, you know, picking two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine a trip. It was it was good fishing. God, yes. It was, it was incredible. Great, you know? and it's fun, you know, because everybody always wants to, you know, do a halibut drift until you're doing it. And then, yeah, you know, right. Like, you know, some... 90% of the time it's like watching grass grow, but, you know, then they, they change their minds and they're bored. But, you know, when you're picking them like that, yeah, no, it's great. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. So as we look ahead, I mean, it's a weird year. We have, here it is July, and we had 59 degree water today. It's yeah. very, very cool. Let's assume that it's going to warm up, and all indicators are with an El Nino bearing down on us and yellowfin pushing up the Baja coast into San Diego. It seems like at some point in time, this water is going to get warm. What can we expect up here? I mean, heck, you've already caught bluefin tuna this year. Yeah, well, that was another island on another boat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. You know, that was pretty, pretty interesting to see that stuff up this way so soon. You were on the uh, Endeavor. Yes. And you were in exceptionally shallow water for bluefin tuna, right? Yeah. Yeah. We um, we were inside anchor fishing a kelp line, and that stuff came up outside of us. And we drove over the first spot we seen and looked down at the meter, and we're in 66 feet of water. Oh, my God. And, uh, you know, we're, I don't think we went deeper than 25, maybe 30 fathoms at the most. Oh, so, you know, God. 150 to 180 feet. It was not, yeah. it was not deep. It, that spot of fish had just been pushing all this anchovy that was back behind the island, and it just pushed it all the way in there and just followed it down the back where it wanted to go. That was, uh, you know, it's pretty neat. It's pretty fun. Uh, they didn't want to go straight up and down because they were going to be right on the bottom, so these fish, he'd hook at me and watch them, and they were just staying on the surface the whole time. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, yeah, shoot. Who knows What'd you what get? You got two now. of those things? Or? Yeah, we went two for seven. Yeah. You know, needless to say, we're a little under. Undergun, yeah. yeah. There's 10 to 100, maybe a little over 100 pound fish. Wow. Boiling around. And, you know, the, the two we we got were 95 pounds, you know, just under 100 pounds. And that came on, you know, 800 L's and Torium 16s and I think a Trinidad 20. So, you know, a little, uh, Undergun. a lot of, of mono. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it was kind of kind of tough, but you know, we worked hard to get them to the boat, and the guys got them. And we had quite a few heartbreaks, but I mean, we weren't ready for it. We were under gun. We we're rockfish and sea bass trip, you know. <laughs> Did does that portend bluefin for the future, or is it complete crap shit? That doesn't mean much. It was just. Uh, what no, do you think? I mean, I, I I don't think it's still up there where it was. I think it might have pushed back out. You know down towards the outer islands or heading back towards Clemente or SBI in that way. But yeah, you know, it came up here last year. Yeah, right. Yeah, you guys had came, some good fishing, yeah, right? Came up the beach. It was outside of Malibu. It came inside of Malibu pretty shallow doing the same stuff too. God almighty. You know, down by County Line and up the back of Anacapa and behind our, you know, the footprint closure and through Santa Cruz and stuff. And then even out up into the flats out you know, which is deeper water. It's a, quite a few miles off Santa Rosa, but the you know, guy's seen it up there. And, you know, it just got to settle in. If it ever settles in up here, be in business like the guys down south. Yeah, I mean, I think the <laughs> odds are pretty good. I mean, there's fish up at, in San Francisco now. Yeah, yeah, they, they caught a nice one the other day, didn't they? Yeah, they caught a nice one, and then uh, was it yesterday they contacted me and they had two or three out of five? Something yeah, like that, and nice big ones yeah. again too. So, you know, guys might be catching them up north and just keeping it hush hush. Still, I know a lot of private boat guys. Yeah. Last year, catching them up out of Port San Luis and places up there. So I'm I'm gonna just say that is a distinct possibility that we could get a shot of that bluefin tuna. What else do you see in our future? In a typical year, when the water starts to warm up, what do we start to catch up here in the Channel Islands? What do you see? You know, as the water starts warming up, we'll, we should get some better bass fishing. The bass are starting to bite a bit. You know, it's just been kind of funky. The water keeps rolling itself over, cooling back down. Once it gets warm and, you know, stays consistent there, 
that, that stuff will liven up, settle down, you know, won't be so shell shocked of all the changes it's going through. Some good bass fishing, hopefully some bonita this year. Yeah. You know, even some yellowtail. It's been a little bit slower the last few years on the yellowtail, but that, I mean, that's nothing new. It got pretty good there for a while, and the El Nino water pushed all the fish up, and after that, but you know, it's just everything's kind of come back to its normal cycle of how things are. And when you see all this anchovy around, Cody, is this the most anchovy you've, you've seen in recent years? Or is uh, there, it about normal or what? You know, the last couple of years, there's been a lot. Yeah. There's been a lot this year, that's for sure. I mean, at the islands, out here, on the coast, up the beach, down the beach, there's definitely a lot around. What does that say about, uh, that, that's just the environment going back to normal more than anything, yeah. right? Yeah, you know. Uh, Pretty sure that sardine comes from, where is it? It's like down, not in this country. Yeah, right. <laughs> Somewhere south. That tidal, like, yeah. Tidal flow up and it does its cycle with the warmer waters, I believe. And, um, you know, things are just kind of coming back to normal. It's not saying we're not going to have sardine. There's sardine around. I'm pretty sure landings down south are fishing sardine. Yeah. You know? Anchovy. Here, we have a lot of anchovy, and, you know, needless to say, it. It works up here, and this year we're tenfold catching rockfish on anchovy versus squid. Yeah, that's crazy. That's what they want, you know. Yeah. What about sand bass? Is that uh, in our future? Do you think? Yeah, you know, I think once this stuff settles up a little bit, you know, we've we've caught a few this year. We spent a few days on the beach. We've come out here and looked at our local spots that you know, keeping check on them. You know, it just hasn't been quite ready yet reading's not quite there water's funky and miscolored a lot of the time you know but it's gonna come around it's gonna it'll get going there we'll have a little shot it just might be a little bit later it was like middle of june last year end of june it got pretty good bass fishing on the beach and quite a bit of sand bass and calico bass around and uh, you know this year it's had its flashes it just hasn't quite gotten there yet but that's what we're hoping for. Yeah, you we feel like we're behind. Chronologically, yeah. it's July, yeah. but it feels more like June, yeah. doesn't it? Early you know? June. Yeah, it's just just a little bit. Things are taking a little bit longer to get with it this year than, you know, normal cycle. But, you know, hopefully it comes and get back to the regularly scheduled program. Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> These freaking kelp flies are a pain in the neck this year, aren't they? I, uh, I, they're flying on the lens here as I'm doing this. I. We're seeing them land on yeah, you. Right. They're yeah. all over me right now. Uh, what a pain in the neck. Walk around and smash them all while we're filming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're good, man. They're, uh, they're abundant and they're annoying. I know. <laughs> Have you seen anything uh, cool that normally you don't see? Basking sharks? Do you normally see them? And have you seen them this year? Have you seen uh, any blue yeah. Anything weird like that? No, I haven't seen a basking shark this year. I've heard of guys seeing one. Uh, there are some orcas. Orcas have been coming through. Oh, yeah? Probably like the last two months or so. I know the whale watching guys have been seeing them. We've, I've heard other boats driving in and seeing them. It seems like we've always been like, you know, a mile or two behind or wrong. I know the Pacific Eagle, they stopped on some the other day on their way home, but you know, we were battling quite a bit of weather and uh, I wasn't going to drive down to do that. And yeah. But kicked. But, um,. <laughs> You know, we've seen them in the past. Well, I think if anything, anything crazy we've seen this year. A little bluefin tuna in the shallows at Santa Rosa. Swordfish in the shallows at Anacapa. That's probably the coolest stuff. That's pretty cool, some man. Have you seen some sword, seen sorties in there? Yeah, you know, we had one the other day around the boat, and uh, he let us get right up to it and follow it around. It was pretty neat. He wasn't spooked at all. It was, you know, it was a good fish scene tour for people. That is yeah. bitching. Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was pretty big, you know, probably a couple hundred pounders. Wow. How cool pretty is healthy. that? Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is so cool. I mean, part of this whole day today, and I've been doing this for a long time, and I mean, just the islands are so beautiful, and the sun was out, and like my brother said, the fish are biting. He goes, I hate to see this day in, is what Paul said to me. And I go, I do too, man. This has been so enjoyable. It's been just such a great trip. And as I say, you have to add all that stuff in. And you can start right up there in the ticket office in the morning with Sal. 
he is awesome with the people. He, my brother goes, man, he's a teacher is what he is. <laughs> he's out there taking his time with everybody, telling them what kind of jig, you know, just really, really showing a great deal of concern for the clients at Ventura Harbor Sport Fishing. Yeah, absolutely. So for those of you that don't know, he's our landing manager. He does a fantastic job for all the boats. Very good with the people, very helpful, great at keeping the landing in order and things nice and stocked and smelling good and clean and making sure the customers are taken care of every morning while they're there and have Absolutely. Every, everything they need, you know. He tries his, tries his hardest and the rest the rest is on you. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. And if there He's is... He's not trying to just sell you things you don't need. He He's really is. He's trying hard because he knows we told him what to do sure you guys have in the morning, yeah right so. <laughs> he's a good guy and you know if there's a, a somebody's daughter or son watching and dad speaks spanish he's good with up there with uh with sal because yeah. sal speaks fluent spanish yeah no sal's, sal's great that's that's fantastic that we have that i uh i myself am not fluent in spanish i can maybe you know bs my way around oh well bit. that's good <laughs> that's perfect and we send more people out here that speak Spanish and yeah. you can practice up. <laughs> but we, we do our best. <laughs> That's great. And uh, if somebody's going to make a reservation, is it best to call the landing or is it best uh, to... Either or. Yeah. Either or. I mean, if you call the landing, you know, after 10 o'clock on most nights, nobody's going to be there. Yeah. And then usually if there's not a boat going out that night, I believe everybody goes home by 8 o'clock because there's nothing going on anymore. Yeah. But yeah, give the landing a call if you want to do it that way they'll sign you up get your information over the phone and book your spot um, or you can do it online it's super easy it's pretty much what they're doing when you call them you can just do it yourself enter a sportfishing.com click on the book now link or view schedule to check out the trips that the boats have and click on the date you want sign up get your information in and you don't even have to make a phone call it's very simple you're ready to go when you get here you don't have to do anything just sign in get your stuff up top and then you come down to the boat so enjoyable <laughs> man and i kind of glossed over it and it's not fair so let's not gloss over it man the food on here i'm on the freaking carnivore keto diet so you know um there you go i needed like uh, a custom meal and i got it man nice, nice. you know i got my yeah. lettuce strap burger my brother goes, man, I'm going to have a, you know, he's in China, so they don't have <laughs> grilled cheese sandwiches all the time. No, so he's like, I got to have a grilled yeah. cheese sandwich. Yeah. And he goes, man, this is to die for. Getting his uh, American fixing. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it's a delightful environment in there, clean, good food. That's just another thing that makes me want to come back here and fish on the island. Spirit again really, really soon. Oh, heck yeah. No, Gavin does a good job down there. Making sure the galley stays clean, well stocked. Take your order, make it how you want it. He's not afraid to, you know, do whatever you want. He'll make it. If we can make it with what we carry, he'll do it. <laughs> and Gavin was the one who gave the uh, seminar on the way out and did a great yeah. job. Fantastic. Yeah, Gavin, he likes doing that, so he's, he's our seminar guy. He's appointed <laughs> to be the seminar guy? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it helps out. You know, we, we usually do on most trips sometimes. You know, we start fishing just... You know, short of where we're going to go, and we don't have time to do it. And this or that, but no, it's good. Especially, you know, when we have a novice group, and we know there's a lot of first timers and rental rods that generally they probably haven't been fishing in the ocean before, or only a couple times, and they yeah. might not know what we're doing. We, you know, we kind of want everybody to be on the same page there, at least have a general idea. That way, you know, you know, it's like it'd be like showing up to work for the first day, and you don't know what you're supposed to do, and then clock in and you're just standing there watching everybody around you you know <laughs> exactly at least, at least give you a foot in the door and you know help you out and the guys will still go around and help and show people and drop you down and help you get bit and show you how to hook fish and get the fish up and what to do it's uh everybody's out here learning you know we want everybody to have a good time remember it they're out here you know, we want to catch some fish, have a good time, and try our best to give it to them. Man, there. you succeeded, let me tell you. Oh, and thank you. If I were going to send a family who's never gone fishing before to a boat, I'd have no hesitation send to them send them, them here, man. Send them on yeah, out. they're going to have a the time of their life. Heck yeah. Yeah, I saw that today. I <laughs> yeah. mean, there was some kids out here that, you know, first time, and man, they're bouncing barracuda after a little <laughs> bit of instruction and yeah. catching these big vermilions and just having a really good time. and. You know, that's the way this 
sport is going to grow is if we get new people in and they have a positive, fun experience because they're all down there saying, hey, can, how do I get the video or how do I watch yeah, your YouTube channel? And, you know, they're going to share it and because they want to show everybody what they did and yeah, how much fun yeah. they had. And so my hat's off to you for, you know, spreading the word of sport fishing. Yeah, we're trying, man. <laughs> all right, well, it looks like we're almost in. Anything we else are. you want to cover? I mean, I think we've covered it all. We no, know how to I catch think, barracuda I think now. That's about it. I it go ahead. Come out fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Cody, it has we been. We want to take you fishing. It has been such. You can such, only do it if you come. <laughs> it's been such a delight for my brother and I to spend time with you. No, you know, thank you. We don't have a lot of time to spend together, and we chose to do it on the island spirit. Yeah, no, I was glad when you, you know, messaged me the other day asking. Absolutely. Yeah, there's. Come on out. And uh, we're not looking backwards at all. It's like, in fact, I'm like, hey, let's do one more of these before you go to San Francisco. Yeah, heck yeah. Yeah. We're gonna do another one. All right, Cody, you're the man. Thank you, hey, my friend. Thank you. Really Absolutely. appreciate your time and all the care that you put into this trip. We we had a memorable time. Oh man, it was a fun one. It was a fun one. I'm glad. <laughs> Take care, my friend. Definitely, you too, Phil.